Okay, I just clicked the go live button. Hello, everyone. We're going to give everyone just a few minutes to join in. We have 28 people waiting already. Great. And they're already letting us know. Hello, everyone. We're going to give everyone just a few minutes to join in. We have 28 people waiting already. Great. And they're already letting us know. Feedback. <laughs> yeah, who's going to turn off? Okay. I just clicked the go live button. Hello, everyone. We're going to give everyone just a few minutes to join in. We have 28 people waiting already. Great. And they're already letting us know. Okay, so I got the feedback turned off. And I'm just monitoring it here. Okay. All right, so welcome everyone. Um, I am going to put the camera back on myself so that you can see who's talking. Okay, great. So welcome everyone um, to tonight's um, live paint along. We wanted to, this is a last minute thing. So thank you guys for all being here on last minute notice. I'd like to thank Darlene Hinman. Uh, Darlene reached out to me um, Monday morning and said, hey, well, you should do a five paint along for the sunflowers for Ukraine. And I'm like, why did I think of that? <laughs> what a great idea. And have everybody who wants to come along and paint. Um, obviously, we normally do these type of sessions in the Alcoholic Art Society, and everyone is invited on camera who wants to come on camera. But when we go live to a large group, which the Alcoholic Art community is a large group. Uh, we never know how many people are going to show up and we don't want to have any technical issues accommodating everyone. So we just go live on YouTube. So the beauty of it is that we, you can focus on the screen here with um, me, myself and the contributors that are here with you tonight. I'm going to give everyone a chance to introduce themselves. And um, then also you guys can, we can focus on different techniques and you guys can chime in in the comments. Um, Vera is, and Terry are gonna be monitoring the comments for any questions. So if you have questions while we're demonstrating or comments, or, you know, there are a million techniques that you can use to create sunflowers with alcohol ink. If, we're, if there's something that you use that works really well, um, don't be afraid to share with us. Um, we are a community. We all learn and grow together. So uh, feel free to share your comments and input in the comments on Facebook as well. We'd love to hear your techniques as well. Um, I am going to uh, first say while we're here, first, um, we are here because of the events that are going on over the Ukraine right now. And sunflowers are the... Um, national flower of the Ukraine and artists around the world are coming together, which I think is great by um, painting, showing their paintings of sunflowers or painting sunflowers and sharing them on social media to spread the word and awareness and also send a message to the Ukrainian people that we all stand with them and um, we're thinking about them. We may be helpless um, from where we stand, but at least we can let them know um, visually and um, and vocally how we support them. And I, I can't think of a better way than with sunflowers. And when you paint sunflowers, they're beautiful in all mediums, but especially alcohol ink. Uh, so thought that would be very appropriate to come here with you this evening and uh, create them in the alcohol ink art community as a live broadcast so we can all create together. And then after we're done, um, share out to social media. Um, if you want, use the hashtag AIArtCom. Um, we'll put it in the uh, comments, but it's hashtag AI art com. And if you share that, then we see it. And then uh, anybody who can follow that hashtag, either on Instagram, uh, Facebook, yeah, YouTube, um, uh, Pinterest, anywhere, um, can follow all the artists that are creating these um, sunflowers through the alcoholic art community. If you do reels, this week on real on um, Instagram, we have a challenge going where we're doing re um, featuring and reposting realistic real. So if you hashtag over there and you do a reel where you're actually showing the process of your self painting, then um, we will repost it for you and invite people to, to follow you. So it's a good opportunity there to so take advantage of that. Um, so enough from me, I am going to um, go around the screen and have our contributors that are here this evening um, introduce themselves and tell you a little bit more about themselves. Um, the first up uh, is Kimberly. Kimberly is going to be the first presenter this evening. Um, Kimberly, why don't you introduce yourself? 
I'm Kimberly and I've been painting with alcohol ink for about four or five years now and I do a lot of florals so that's my big thing. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina and I have just recently become a contributor with the alcohol ink um, society or, or alcohol ink community. So I'm just happy to be here and I'm excited to show you how to um, create a flower tonight with blown air. We're going to use canned air. If you don't have that, I know Laurie's going to, Laurie's going to do one with a brush. And so we'll have a little bit of something for everybody, I think. But it's exciting to be here. Yeah, we're glad to have you, Kimberly. Yeah, so we're going to do two different techniques tonight because we realize everyone may not have the same supplies. And because these can be pretty quick projects, we figure we could squeeze in two. So you get two for one. Um, next up is Terry Jones. Hi, I'm Terry Jones. I have been painting with alcoholics since 2013. So that's eight years now. And um, I've been a contributor for, I don't know, five, six, seven, I, a long time. And um, I paint mostly realistic alcohol inks. And I live in uh, Murphy, North Carolina. So we're another North Carolina girl. All right. Well, thanks for joining us tonight, um, Terry. And Corrine's up next. Sure. Hi, I'm Corrine Carpino. And gee, I've been painting with alcohol inks, I think, for nine years. And um, I've been a contributor with this society for a number of years. I don't remember how many. We turned five, five, years, old, five <laughs> years old this month. And Kareem, hey. yeah, Kareem's hey. been with us since the beginning. So, yes. Great. And um, I live in Mount Dora, Florida. Okay. And Vera, Vera, who's also monitoring our YouTube comments as well. Vera, we can't hear you. <laughs> You're muted. You're muted. Oh, hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. That probably happened when I turned my phone around. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, hi, everybody. I'm Vera Worthington. I just commented on your comments that this video will be available at your convenience if you can't watch the whole thing um, on the YouTube channel. It'll always be there for you. So everybody just like relax, get a cocktail, watch along. <laughs> But anyway, um, again, I'm Vera. Uh, I live on Long Island. I've been painting with alcohol inks for um, almost four years now. I can't believe it. it's been that long. And uh, it's always an adventure, always learning something new. Um, while I can paint really well with brushes, I'm not so good with um, canned air. So hopefully Kimberly will help me with that tonight. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> I'm sure oh some God. of you were in that boat too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not good with canned air. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. You're watching um, our YouTube channel. So while you're here, you might as well subscribe if you're interested in seeing um, YouTube videos of alcohol leak techniques and stuff as we post them. We do that periodically here. And if you um, ask for notifications, I think there's a little bell or something you click on. If you click on that, anytime we post anything new or, or um, have any event like this, you get notified. So while you're here, um, do that. I think you will like that. And also check out past videos. We've got a whole history of videos and lots of techniques there um, to watch. All right. So why don't we get started? I am. What I'm going to do is spotlight the screen on Kimberly. Um, and, and I'm also going to point my screen down so I can try to do what she's doing in real time. I'll mute myself while I'm doing that so you don't hear my air. and We can focus on what Kimberly's doing. So let me just spotlight you, Kimberly. Okay, and I'm going to turn my camera down in just a second. But I thought I would tell you what I'm using tonight. So I'm going to be using canned air to blow my petals. And I'm using, I'm sorry, these little... These are micro makeup tools or micro dental tools. And this is what I use for all my florals to add detail to the center and um, just any kind of detail. So I'll be using those. And I have Ranger inks. Um, I decided to use a pearl ink for my petals. And if you don't have a pearl, you can use any kind of alcohol ink. You can use you know, any yellow, like sunshine yellow or dandelion. This is actually alchemy. This is one of the pearls. And because I'm using a pearl ink tonight, I have to use blending solutions. I can't work with alcohol and a pearl ink together. So that's real important to know because some people don't like to use the pearls and that's because they've tried them with um, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and it does not mix at all. So if you'll use blending solution, this 
which looks like this. I usually take this and put it in little bottles like this um, so I can control how much I'm dropping a little bit better. But um, if you use this blending solution with pearls, you can get the same result that you can with regular alcohol ink and, al and isopropyl alcohol. So uh, that's very important to know. And then I have some just regular alcohol inks. I have a brown, which I'll use for my center, and this is teak wood. And then I have um, ember, which is an orangey red that I'm going to mix in there a little bit. And I might add a little bit of yellow, the sunshine yellow, in, in snow cap. I use snow cap for every painting that I do pretty much. So I'll use snow cap for some highlights. So I'm going to, oh, and I'm painting on UPO paper. And this is a, I believe it's a six by six square. But you can use any kind of similar paper. You can use um, the backside of photo paper, Kirkland paper. You can use tile. Um, Pixis has a, a, a good white paper at Graphics and NARA paper. A lot, there are lots of similar products out there. Um, UPO will stain a little bit, and I'm okay with that because that's not really going to make a difference with this painting. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera down. Let me bring this over here. Okay. And my light's a little bit bright, so hopefully, hopefully it's not going to wash everything out too much. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to start with teak wood, and this is a really deep brown. And I'm just going to go ahead and put some of that down on my paper. Just a good bit, because you know with sunflowers, the centers are pretty big. And the petals are a little shorter, smaller. So I'm just putting a good bit of that teak wood down. And then I'll just use one of my little tools, my little micro tools. If you don't have these handy, just, um, you know, you can use a brush or just a Q-tip or anything to kind of spread that ink out some. Because what I'm going to do is have this dry pretty much completely before I start blowing out my petals. Now, I don't have a completely round uh, blot of, blob <laughs> of ink here. I mean, it's almost oblong a little bit because what I'm hoping is that I can have my flower turn just slightly. So I don't want it to be completely round. I, I've done some that are completely like front facing and the center looks very round. But for this one, I'm going to do it a little bit uh, oval shaped and kind of diagonal. So I want to get that uh, really dry before I start blowing it. And I hope that you can see that okay. I know it, it looks really dark on my screen, but it is just a very deep brown. It's not black at all. And to speed up the process, you can just let that air dry, but I'm just going to speed up the process a little bit by using this little hand tool here to, to dry my ink. It's still going to be a little bit sticky and shiny, but that's okay. It just needs to be, you know, fairly dry before you start blowing out the petals. And hopefully you can see it. Okay, so with the pearls, um, again, this is alchemy, the yellow pearl. You want to make sure you shake these up really well because that pigment will settle in the bottom. And you can actually see it, you know, when it settles down there. You want to make sure that you shake it really well because if not, you're not going to get, um, you know, a good mixture of it that comes out. All right, so shake that up really well and then have your blending solution ready. If you're using regular alcohol ink for your petals, like a dandelion or something like that, it's okay just to use alcohol. But I'm using blending, blending solution because, again, I'm using pearls. Let me kind of clean the end of this off. It's kind of, I probably put the wrong top on it. Okay, so I've got my canned air ready. What I'm going to do is just drop my yellow along the edge of that brown and use a little blending solution and just give it a little bit of air. Now I take my canned air and kind of go around the edges, kind of to shape my petal a little bit. And just a couple of things about canned air, if you've never used it before, you definitely never ever want to shake this up. I use the dust off. I know it's a kind of mirrored look here, but this is dust off duster. And you can get this at a lot of the big box stores, you know, like Walmart and Costco and BJ's if you have those um, membership uh, stores near you, but um, and it can be get kind of expensive. And I usually have a couple of cans that I'm using at one time so that I can switch back and forth because they get it 
kind of cold, you know, when you're using them a lot, especially if you're doing a larger painting. So you never want to shake this up and you never want to lean it completely horizontal to your table. You want to keep it upright a little bit, almost, you know, about like 45 degrees or so is about where I work with it. But as upright as possible and still enough that you can get the straw very, very close to the paper. So it's kind of tricky. Sometimes you have to sort of hang it over, you know, the edge of your table a little bit. That might be work for some people. Um, but never, ever lay it completely down because then it's going to start to spray some of that fluid out. And you don't want that. It really will kind of mess up your painting. All right, so let's do that again. I'm going to go all the way around with this yellow. And so I'm putting down a little yellow, a little blending solution, and just giving it some air. And I'm going around the edges of it with a straw. Kimberly, can you see what mine looks like? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what are you using, Laurie? I'm using I'm using um, isopropyl alcohol and then the duster dust off. And what color? And yellow? What? I use yellow? dandelion, and I I did so I didn't use blending solution. I used dandelion alcohol ink. Okay. So the first thing I noticed is that you probably dropped your yellow a little bit too far inside of your brown. Ah, okay. A lot of that's coming out. So what I'm trying to get is just a little bit of that brown that comes out into my petals. I don't okay. want a whole lot of it. So I'm dropping my yellow at the very, very edge of the brown. All right, I'll come back and fix that somehow. Yeah, and if you're starting to get those little spindly lines, those little spidery looking things that a lot of people get, you just need to add more fluid, more alcohol or blending solution. That should smooth everything out. Okay, got it. All righty, so let's do that again. And you um, want to always keep blowing your ink until it's dry, because if you leave it wet, it's, it'll start to kind of create some odd shapes. So you just keep some air on it until you have it completely dry. And I don't worry a whole lot about my petals being super perfect or anything. I mean, this is more a, you know, just um, a inspired piece. You know, it's more inspired by sunflower rather than something very realistic. I don't do a lot of super realistic paintings. I like to use, I like to use photographs and, you know, uh, flowers from nature to kind of inspire my paintings. But I don't get super caught up if they don't look exactly like it. So uh, this is. Um, you know, just more of an, a sunflower inspired piece. And actually the other night I painted one and live for my my uh, Facebook group for students. And I took it aside and showed it to my husband and he said, I'm not really getting the sunflower from that. <laughs> so, okay. so my husband's super honest and sometimes I wish he would just, you know, not be quite so honest. So anyway, suit is a sunflower inspired painting. Inspired, so, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. So uh, I'm just trying, you know, I want to keep the center pretty large and that's, you know, that's one of the things about sunflowers that's there are lots of different kinds of sunflowers out there, but most of them have, you know, pretty large centers and the petals are not super, super long. And so I'm just kind of trying to bear that in mind when I'm painting this. All right, so I have a, I've been around one time with my petals and I placed them, a, you know, there's a little bit of white space between. Now you could leave it like that. You could totally just leave it like that and do put your center in. But a lot of times I like to go back and where I've got a little bit of white space, I want to fill that in some. And it looks like you have some layering of your petals when you do that. So petals on top of petals and which you'll see with some flowers, you'll have, you know, just uh, layers where they have some smaller ones on top of them. So I'm just going right back on top of that. I might not, I might not do it all in every, Spot, but I'm going to fill in a lot of those little spaces with some more layers. I just, 
mine. <laughs> What's that? I just screwed up mine. I stripped a little blending solution on one of my petals. <laughs> That's okay. You can, you know, and I do that sometimes too. You can just go right over top of it. Just drop more ink and more alcohol and just blow another petal right on top and it'll smooth it right out. I think I'm about to do that. Yeah. It's never ruined. Alcohol ink is so forgiving. You can just keep on, you know, reactivating that ink and and just changing it up. Mine go through so many phases. My flowers look nothing, a lot of them, nothing like they started out in the end. All right, so I'm gonna, um, one more right here. All right, so once I have all the petals that I want, then I wanna work on the center. And I'm gonna use this, this kind of reddish orange, which is ember. It's a really pretty color. I'm going to put it in my palette and it's kind of clogged up there. This is probably where I'm going to spray it everywhere. All right, so I'm just putting a little bit in my palette and I'm going to add a little bit of snow cap to it because that will make it look a little bit more opaque and it'll show up a little bit better on my brown here, which is really dark, if I add a little bit of that white to it. And then I'm just using one of my little tools, my little micro tools. And I'm going to mix that up really well. It almost looks a little um, pink, but it's, I don't know, it's supposed to be kind of a reddish orange color. All right, so I'm going to start by, so, okay, so first, the first thing I do when I get all my petals blown out is I, I rotate my painting around and decide which way I like it best. So, Cause a lot of times it just, the ink just kind of does that for you. It decides for you how your, you know, composition needs to be or how, which direction it wants to go. Sometimes you have to kind of figure it out. But for this one, I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna have, think about my light source coming from this direction over here where my hand is and since it's not completely round, I want to think about my sunflower maybe kind of tilting, like the center's kind of tilting in that direction toward the sun. So um, first I'm just going to put some color down and we'll, then we'll start thinking about the light source and kind of how to get some dimension in there. I'm just going to go around with this reddish color all around the outside there. And there are so many different kinds of sunflowers with, you know, the center sometimes look green in the middle sometimes they're orange or yellow or brown like dark brown and sometimes they have a little red in them which i, I like and so um i'm just creating my my own little thing here you just make it whatever you want to if you wanted to put a, a purple you know center in there you could do that now i'm afraid my light's kind of washing this out some but hopefully you can see it uh, well i'll then i'll try to tilt it around so you can see what I'm doing there. It looks super dark on my screen. So let's, what I'm gonna do is have this side over here a little bit wider. I'm gonna have it very thin here and a little bit um, wider on this side. So it, I'm trying to kind of give it the idea that it's kind of tilting over a little bit, kind of leaning to one side. Um, Laurie, are you able to see this? Because my screen looks so dark. Are you able to see what I'm doing at all? Yes, we can see, yes. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna have to show this us that, Vera. Oh, I was about to start over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so once I've got a little bit of that color in there, I think I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it too. I have some sunshine yellow, and I'm going to put a little bit of that in my palette with some snow cap. And I'm going to mix that up the same way that I did the red. And I'm going to add a little bit of that in there too. I want my center on, my, on this particular sunflower to be really dark. Um, and when you have that darkness in the center, it makes it look like it's recessed. So it's kind of that, uh, this area around the outside will be the raised part. And then on the inside where it's dark is where 
um, it kind of goes down in there and it's kind of a deep, a deep center. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of this yellow now and brighten up some of these areas, especially along this edge right here, which if, if my sun, if my light's coming from this direction and this area is raised, it's probably going to hit this top edge here of my flower. And, and then this part is recessed and it's going to hit this area right here. And so um, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute when we start really brightening that up. You'll be able to see it hopefully have a little dimension in there. Let's see if you can. I'm just going to keep adding some yellow. So For the folks at home, she looks so easy. <laughs> I'm sorry, what is that? This I said, you make it look so easy, Kimberly. Oh. It, this takes some. It takes a lot of practice, but I promise you that if you do it a lot, it will become pretty easy. I mean, I feel like I can paint flowers in my sleep, but when it comes to other things that you all do, um, I can't do it. So, you know, it's just whatever you practice at and do the most. You know, it becomes almost second nature, but um, there are things that I definitely have a, you know, like I'm definitely not like this with landscapes and all other kinds of things. We all have our strengths. That, yeah, and I, and I truly believe it's whatever you <laughs> work at the most. And weaknesses. <laughs> so another trick that I use is that I, these little tools have a little fuzzy tip on the end. And I like to just pull that off completely. And then you just have the plastic tip left and you can use that to kind of scrape in some little uh, dashes and lines and it gives it a kind of a feathery or a, I like a little fuzzy look. And you can go around the outside and just add, you know, some little, pull some little lines in there. And especially when your ink is still wet like this is, you can really get in there and and add some texture in there with these little tools. And I'm just using that little plastic piece right on that's on the end. So Kimberly, I'm using the blower, Kim Holtz blower. Uh huh. And it's working pretty good for this. Have you ever used it? I do use that. Yeah. I haven't used it for this sunflower painting, but um. I'm just uh, finding I, I, can, I think my problem was my canned air. For some reason, I just don't have the, I haven't practiced controlling it. Yeah, yeah. And so this I'm able, I'm able to control because I use it all the time. Because I'm used to that, I think. I'm actually going to be uh, demonstrating for Tim Holtz. Uh, I mean, for Ranger at their uh, training coming up. So I'm at what, creativation? Yeah. So I'm um, really nervous about that. <laughs> oh, you'll do fine. You'll do fine. But um, and so I thought about that when you mentioned the little blower because I'll be using that for all of my demonstrations. And you know, yeah, I that's had next to, month, isn't it? It's next month. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming up. It'll be here before. It's in Orlando this year. Um, so it should be. I haven't you know, been to one of those before, so it should be. I was going to go this year, but it didn't work out. Okay, so, she okay, so I've got some good color down there now. And now I'm just going to put some snow cap in my palette. The, uh, orange. And just use the snow cap only and really brighten up those areas that I want to highlight. So I'm going to come into this top area here. Uh, like the end of a coffee right. stir. No, she did it with a Q-tip. So I'm coming along this little oh. edge here. So you, you can use and then it. this top area here. Yeah, we got one here. Okay. I mean, this is super giant brush. Super giant brush. So. So yeah, she, she makes this real, she used this, and then she started just doing this. Yeah. 
And then I also, you know, now I, I still have that little tool with just the plastic on the end. And I'm also just going to come inside the this brown part and just put some little dots in there because I don't want it to look, I want it to have some texture to it. So I'm just going to put some of those little, little white dots. And they're very, very fine. So it's, it's still going to keep that center part very dark, but it's just adding some little texture in there. And I, you can just go around and just get some little squiggly lines in there and just make it look like it's got something going on rather than just looking super flat. Um, and that's basically it. I mean, I would work on it probably a little bit more. I would probably put some of my brown in my palette and really uh, kind of make this outer edge a little bit fuzzy out here. But I can I can work on centers for a very long time. I mean, there's just, to me, it's my favorite thing to do is just make these look very, very dimensional and um, just, I don't know, I could spend a lot of time on them. But yeah, if you, this little tool is great for just using that plastic and just pulling it, pulling it through the ink and just adding what looks like, you know, Little, a little fuzzy area there. So I can't, it's hard for me to tell if this has dimension when I'm painting it. So a lot of times I'll just take a picture of it with my phone and then I can really tell what I need to do. To it. I can tell whether it has dimension or if I need to go back and tweak some things. So, um, so that's what I have so far and I may you know, change it up a little bit, but that's a, a start. Can you all see that okay? Yeah, very nice. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. Hers is so much nicer than mine. I think I need to put more beige or more white in mine. Yeah, nice. when I'm adding these highlights, I really kind of go extreme, you know, with that snow cap because it disappears a lot. Like it really soaks yeah. to the back ground some so um it might look super white at first but it will soak in so it um you know i use a lot of that anybody got any questions uh, is it easier to pearl <laughs> what was that is it easier when you don't use pearls because i use pearls yeah um, for me, for me, it's about the same. If I'm using blending solution with pearls, it is totally fine. But you, who is that using pearls? That Vera? Yeah, I use the pearls. I'm just wondering if using regular alcohol ink is easier than using the pearls. I think people well, might be interested too. Yeah, I mean, it really depends. Um, I think how much you practice that. The thing about the pearls with a blending solution is, I think that it's a little bit easier to control sometimes the pearls. that They don't move, I think, as fast, as, as quickly as the regular inks do. Um, so for me, they're a little bit easier to control. But I, th I, think it's what, I think it's a personal preference thing, really. Okay. I'll try it next time with um, regular alcohol ink and see okay. if I could something a little better than this. <laughs> So Kimberly, so there yeah. are a few questions. Um, one is a couple of people who came in like, well, I want to know if you identified the colors you're using. Um, yeah. if, I know you did, but could you repeat those real quick? And sure. so for the middle, for the center, I use teak wood. I dropped that down first and I let it dry. And then I used this alcohol pearl alchemy is the name of it. And it is a pearl, so you have to use blending solution with this. You cannot use alcohol, regular alcohol with it. Um, but you could also use sunshine yellow or dandelion or any of the other yellows or, you know, even other brands, anything. Just a yellow, I think. And I used um, this ember, which was my red. I put that in my palette to add some color to the center. And snow cap, that's really it. Yes. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, and yeah, so someone, someone asked about what the white was in that snow cap. Yes. Okay, great, cool. And all right, well, thank you, Kimberly. This was great um, to see you do this. I have to do it a little bit more practice. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yeah, I definitely, it definitely takes practice. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, mine, mine looks interesting, but I'm not done with it. I'm going to go back. And mine's a big blob right now, but it'll be good. I can, that's the thing is, is that when I'm working on something, it's not going quite my way. I then it, it becomes a challenge and I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm in charge here. You know, <laughs> I just keep yeah. going to get something I like. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's with alcohol, we, like for me, it's never going to be like totally perfect because it's such a fluid type of thing with the way that I work with it. So I don't set that expectation for myself. I just know that I'm going to have some mistakes. Sometimes I'm going to spill some, you know, blending solution or alcohol in places. And it just becomes, I have to make it just part of my painting, you know, just, it's never going to be perfect. But I think that's the beauty of it. That's why I love alcohol ink is that it's, it is that way. And it's always yeah. going to be different. I, you know, I could paint the sunflower, you know, a hundred times and it's going to look different every single time. I know. It, 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 that's the thing is it can't be copied. <laughs> no, yeah, right. Painting exactly. Just right. not, not if they use the same techniques doing alcohol, like just not possible. Yeah. But, but I think it's a very forgiving medium once you get used to how it works. Um, yes, I agree. Yeah. So I'm curious if anybody watching is new to alcohol inks or like what kind of experience do you have? Let us know in the comments. Like, where are you? You consider yourself a beginner, been painting for a couple of years. Um, just so we know, like if I need to go, over, if, if everybody hears experience and I might not go as in detail uh, when I do the next presentation, but if there are people who are brand new to it, then I want to explain a, a, a little bit more. Um, so let us know in the comments if you're watching, if um, where you kind of are in your process with alcohol ink. Kimberly, that's gorgeous. It Thank is you. absolutely gorgeous. I Thank love how it. much. Awesome. Yeah, I love how you get that feeling of tilting. You yeah. really did a great job of that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. So pretty. I and realize I, I use the pearls and I realized I can't clean out the way I usually clean out if I make a mess. <laughs> oh, no, that's true. But look at that shimmer. I don't know if you can see it's it. It's beautiful. On the, camera, but the shimmer yeah. is beautiful with those pearls. It really is. And yeah, like, it's absolutely like, gorgeous. It's the shimmer is saving mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does it has a gorgeous um shimmer to it also if, if if you're enjoying this and getting anything out of it um give us a little thumbs up too to tell youtube that you're liking it it kind of helps us a little bit in our exposure as well um okay so beginner less than six months okay good good so i will go a little bit into some of the beginner techniques too whenever i do mine. So Kimberly, thank you. That was really awesome. I, I've always, I always love watching you do that. And more importantly, I see all your stuff on Instagram and I'm just like, whoa, that just looks so awesome. You just totally have the touch. Little thing. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Yeah, of course. All right, so I'll jump over to the next demonstration. We wanted to do two types. So that what Kimberly what Kimberly um, showed us was a technique where we use canned air or blown air to create and move the inks or manipulate the inks around. What I'm going to demonstrate is using a brush and painting and some of the different there and even using a brush and painting there are multiple ways to achieve results. Um, you could just paint it on a white background and then fill in um, fill in a background with with um, like a blue color or okay, like, Laura, Laura, do you want to put the spotlight on your, oh yeah, sorry about that. I didn't realize it didn't there. Thank you. Um, there we go. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, so there are different techniques. One is the first, th this first technique you can use is you can pour the background and then lift out the flower, which I think is what we're going to do because that way I can teach techniques for lifting. I can teach techniques for painting and how you control the inks a little bit more, but as an alternative there, I did do this one and this one, I painted the leaves first and then added the background around the leaves so you can see I was very careful I didn't get all the way to the edges I feel like there's a more seamless edge and in contrast when I do it this way I prefer it this way so that's what I'm going to demonstrate um, here and you know 
when you're talking about the anatomy of a sunflower, I mean, basically it's kind of the same as what Kimberly just um, described. You have dimension in that center part and that center part is the larger part of the flower. So um, I am like, she starts with the middle with teak wood. I don't do that. I start with, I start with by dro dropping ink and letting it run and filling up my background. And then what I do is I come around and, and I lift out areas to white and then paint in. That way um, I'm actually painting in a very specific area and the contrast is gonna be darker. In order to do that, you need to be using a substrate that will, um, a substrate that will uh, go all the way to white. And um, the best substrates that I've found that do that um, include, well, tile works great if you're working on like white ceramic tile, that will always wipe pretty much all the way back to white every single time. Um, I'm using the backside of Amazon Basics photo paper. I just, it's an inexpensive substrate, especially when you're just playing around, you're practicing and you're learning, it's a great substrate to use. It works really, really well. Um, and then there's synthetic um, papers like um, UPO and NARA paper, Terra Slate graphics. Um, am I missing any girls? I think that might be the main ones, but um, those for the most part will lift the white, some better than others, like NARA paper will lift the white probably better than any of those I mentioned. Um, but I like this photo paper, A, because it's inexpensive. This is, it comes in small sizes. You can get eight and a half by 11 sheets. Uh, I get them in the five by seven, so I can do little paintings like this. Um, but it will white to white, which I, I really like. And when I mean white to white or lift to white, you'll see what I mean in a few minutes and why that's important. Some of the things that I'm gonna be using, um, I am going to be using um, some Ranger alcohol inks today. I have uh, dandelion, I have botanical, actually this is mojito, I'll use mojito, but you can use botanical too um, as another one. I use teak wood for the center and that dandelion or a sunshine yellow um, for the petals. Um, then I'm using a sailboat blue for the sky here. Off to the side, let me just clear this out because I'm gonna clean this out because uh, I have my mud in here from when Kim, from Kimberly's painting. Um, but I have a small container here and I have some isopropyl alcohol in a container that I'm just gonna pour in here so I have it readily available. I use that to clean my brushes and I also use that to lift. I have a little bit of a weld palette here. Um, it's actually covered up with aluminum foil so I don't have to keep cleaning it out every time, um, which is useful. A few brushes. Um, I'm probably gonna use this number two filbert a lot for this size paper, but I also have a um, round, I think this is a number six round I have here that I'll be using some too. Um, you can, and this is a number six flat. You use whatever brush you, you find works great for you. Um, some other tools that I may pick up here are, um, I always have a pipette and I buy these in like packs of like 200 for a little bit on Amazon. Um, I have a blender pen. Um, the blender pen is, can be used for lifting. Mostly I'll use a brush for lifting, but you can, a lot of people will use a blending pen. You can also use uh, cotton swabs like Q-tips. Or if you have, there's a product called Fantastics that Terry Jones uses and, and Vera uses a lot. If you've seen any of their presentations, you, you will see that. I'll probably come in and add a little depth in the end with, a, with just a Sharpie, it's just a black Sharpie. Okay, so to get started, the first thing I do is I, I want to drop down, and this time I want to do like a, a decent amount. I'm going to drop down some uh, sailboat blue and I'm putting a decent amount onto my paper because I want a nice vibrant background. So I'm just gonna add in that sailboat blue. And let's see, I think I will pull out a little bit of blending solution. Let's see, where is my blending solution? Okay, maybe I'm not gonna use blending solution. It's supposed to be right here, but it's not. Ever have that happen? 
So instead, I'm, what I'm going to do is add, take my pipette and add some of my isopropyl alcohol just to get it moving around a little bit. You see how that reacts? I always love that look. But I'm just going to rock it back and forth to cover up the entire um, page. And I'd also like to say to you, like Vera and Corrine and Terry and, and um, Kimberly here, if you guys have anything to chime in while I'm working, feel free to do that. I don't mind at all. We will chime. <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm doing a drippy background. If anyone's... Uh -oh. I um, sunflower that I painted the other day with the, the blue and the turquoisey background. I'm doing a similar one now, except that Vera being the purple queen wanted to do purples. So I have a uh, vineyard and boysenberry and I kind of just dripped them on the page and added alcohol. So it was dripping down the page. I just did a quick so, little spotlight on you so people could see it a little bit better. Oh, sure. There you go. Am I spotlighted? Yep. Hi. I don't know if this is the top or if this is the top. I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Let's see. Who am I looking at there? I guess. Oh, it must be me. It's green. <laughs> Hi, Corrine. So I did mine a little bit different. I um, put sailboat blue, a little stone wash, a little glacier, and some cloudy blue. So, yeah. and it was hard to see with my lights, but I've got a little bit of variation in there and then it's still wet. So I'm still moving it around a little bit with a coffee stirrer. Yeah. And that's the fun thing is you can work wet on wet with the ink until you, until it dries, which I always like to do because you can get some interesting shapes and things that way, or you can just let it flow. It's basically what you, you know, what you decide to do. I think Terry's muted. Um, well, I was using the coffee stir and I just used the blue. So, but I put a little more texture in my background too, um, just because I'm a coffee stir addict and I love my coffee stir. So. <laughs> Those are fun for creating landscapes and stuff. So you, you guys are getting a, a, a really good um, background on different tools that we use and we all have our favorites, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to replace the spotlight here. I'm still not dry yet. It's still flowing. I'm waiting till like till I dry out here. Um, you can see I'm getting these nice ridges, and they're just interesting. I might put a whole nother. Light. And I'm just gonna. I need to give this a second to dry. I guess I could just come in here with my blower and make, speed the process up. Yes. I want to go ahead and, and mention safety um, because I feel like we should definitely do that for anyone who's watching this who may be new to alcohol ink or not familiar with it. But um, you want to um, always be working in a well ventilated area or wear a respirator or both. Um, wear, wear gloves if you can, you know, wear gloves to protect your hands, also to keep from the mess from your hands. And um, yeah, so just be mindful of, because especially when you're using isopropyl alcohol and you're using a lot of it, it, um, it is uh, toxic and uh, can cause all, all sorts of problems. So you wanna make sure that you're wearing a respirator with that is protective against organic vapors. Okay, I think I'm dry. So the next thing I want to do is I, like I said, for most of this is the size of this project, I'm gonna use this number two filbert brush. The reason I chose the filbert is because um, it's kind of got like a little bit of a rounded edge, but it's also flat. So it's a mix between a round and a flat. And um, I really like that because it lets me get different angles on things. Um, but the first thing I need to do is figure out my composition and where I want my sunflower to, to uh, show up. So my, the one that I'm going to do is going to basically, we're not going to do anything fancy where it's tilted or anything like that. We're just going to do a simple, straightforward sunflowers, just standing up, standing up nice and bright. So I'm actually going to, I was going to center it, but I think I'm actually going to pull it over to the right just a little bit and maybe, maybe 
up a little bit, maybe right, right in here, so that I've got some composition in that top, top upper right third um, so that I can draw that. And then I'll end up having a stem that goes down the middle. Um, so the first thing that I, what I want to do is I'm going to come in here and just kind of figure out how big I want my center to be. And I've wet my brush with some isopropyl alcohol here. And every time I dip it in here, one of the things you're going to see me do is tap it off on the paper towel. Because the last thing I want to do is come in here with a wet brush. Because what's going to happen as soon as I touch this, that blue is going to spread out like just like a big ring. And that's not the effect I want. I need to have a dry, a dry but damp brush so that I can lift out some of this blue. Um, but what I'm, I'm not going to lift out the center right away. What I'm going to do is just determine how big I want the center. And just as Kimberly pointed out earlier, the center is usually a lot bigger than the petals that we do. So I'm just going to kind of make a nice big round center here and just kind of outline it for now. Because I'll be able to just drop my brown on top of this blue. It's not going to matter um, in the for the center and the blue so much as it matters for the um, for the petals. The petals I need to try to lift those to white or almost to white as possible. So I by getting the center in place and seeing kind of it kind of gives me a sizing um, that I want to use for the for the sunflower. And then what I do is I'm gonna come back with my brush and I'm gonna lift out the, each of the petals. And they're not gonna be as big as the center, but what I like to do is do this kind of motion here where I go around and then to a tip, and then I come on the other side and mirror that. So can you guys see what I did there? I go around here to a tip and then around here and then mirror that. And once I have kind of an outline with the damp brush, I can come back in and wipe it out. And you kind of have to add a little bit of pressure to, to get it to wipe out, but then I kind of wipe up and then I'll clean it off on my paper towel off to the side. And if you guys have any questions, go ahead and, and put them in the comments and I'm happy to answer them for you or, or one I'm, of them. I'm watching. Oh, okay, thanks Vera. Sure. No yeah. one's got any questions. <laughs> Okay, well, good. Well, so you you guys can see that what I, what I did was I was able to lift all the way to white there, which is great. So I'm just going to go around this whole thing and try to quickly do this because this this process right here can take can be kind of time consuming. Actually, it's probably one of the most time consuming parts of this whole thing is lifting that out. But you have to apply a you have to have a damp brush and apply a little pressure to lift that blue out of there. But if you're using the right kind of substrate, like a tile and one of the papers I've mentioned, you'll be able to lift to white or almost white. If you can't lift all the way to white, it's not the end of the world with the sunflower because when you paint the yellow in there, you get a little tinge of green and that ends up being okay too um, and, and looks natural. I've had that happen when I have done it on Yupo because Yupo stains a bit. And when I first started uh, painting with alcohol inks, which was 2012, I believe. So how many years ago is that? It's a long time. About the same amount of time as Terry and Corrine. Um, but when we first started, Yupo was pretty much, other than tile, Yupo was pretty much the only substrate. We were all scrambling to find any alternatives we could because it's a little expensive, you know, when you're learning um, to use, but it is a great substrate. I'm going to ask the viewers at home, it, who's painting along with us? Good question. I'd like to know that too. Or is everybody watching and going to paint later? Just throw a me in the comments if you're painting along with us. Anyone? <laughs> I think there's a, <laughs> there is a delay. There's a delay. So you'll see them in, in just a minute. Well, that's because I'm using I'm using a brush. And honestly, this is so satisfying to watch. <laughs> Deborah, Jason, Brenda, Rhodes is painting. Yay. I can't read 
her last name. Uh, like my vision sucks. I'm trying. <laughs> Elizabeth, Brenda, Jason, Nikki, uh, Samantha, Pam, Mary, Marlene, a whole bunch of yous. Yay. Oh, yay. <laughs> Just be sure to, to post them in social media and use the hashtag AI Artcom. Vera, can you type that in there for them? Of course I can. Thank you. Because it's kind of hard when I say it to really know what it is I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yes. Plus, I have a little bit of an accent. And people are like, what did you say? I do too. I just said use or something. <laughs> <laughs> and you want it posted in the Alcohol Inc. Art Community Group on Facebook, right? Um, yeah, that would be fun. But you know what? Any social media would be fine. If you use that hashtag, we'll, I'll be able to see it. If you do a reel of yourself doing this, it, or, which is one of the videos on um, Facebook or um, in Instagram, we'll be able to repost it for you. And we can tell people to come and like, come and check out your account there. So it might be a good way to get some exposure if you're looking for more exposure. And who's not? <laughs> so you're really good with that filbert. I'm I I've never done well with a little filbert. <laughs> you know, I tried this with a round and it works fine, but I you know, I, when I, when I first started with alcohol ink, I was using filberts a lot and I was able to do lifted flowers and stuff when I was doing like, you know, lift. one of my first things I ever did was just did a whole page of like lifted flowers. And that's all it was. I wish I could find it to show you. It's like, it was kind of crazy. Um, but I used a filbert for it. And I like the way it had a round edge, but was still flat. So it let me, yeah, yeah it's kind of cool. Oh. I, Laura, you cost me money. Now I got to get a filbert. I'm like, oh yeah, I don't have a filbert. <laughs> you got to have a filbert. Have a filbert. <laughs> now, I, I might have to steal it from my watercolors. I'm oh. trying to my you have uh, brushes for them. <laughs> I, do. I, do. I have yeah. Yeah, the, the, um, well, I will use my alcohol ink brushes for watercolor, but I won't use my good watercolor brushes for alcohol ink. That makes sense. I, I agree with that. Because my my good watercolor brushes, I mean, I have a couple brushes that I paid like $80 for one brush. So. Yeah, I'd be even as scared to use it. <laughs> yeah. Do you use it a lot, Terry? Uh, no. <laughs> right. Yeah. I had inter inadvertently one youngster uh, got a hold of it and was using it and she was doing the, the scrubby, scrubby, scrubby thing. And I oh, thought no. I was going to have a oh. heart attack. Ah. Well, so what did you do? Did you quickly hand her a different brush and say, do you mind? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. I said, oh, I didn't mean to have that brush out there, honey. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. one? No. It was Judy's granddaughter. Judy's saying, why didn't you tell me? She's here painting with me today. And it's like, no, it was my fault. I did it. <laughs> You're doing nice. Oh, my petals are different. That's OK. Everybody's petals are going to be different. My petals are different than Laurie's petals. Because yep. Laurie had the filbert. <laughs> <laughs> I have a round. Uh, I couldn't find a filbert. I, I knew I had a small filbert, but I, I don't know where it is. So. Like I said, I didn't put it on supply list because I didn't want people to feel like they had to rush out and buy something. I want to use what you have because you can get this. You can get the same thing from around. Right. Just, I just find that I can lift really good with this one. Yeah, I've never tried a filbert for lifting, so. I'll have to you use this fantastics or well the fantastics do not give me do not do the nice I mean a brush is really better for lifting the fantastic if you're doing trees or some straight lines are fine 
But for stuff like this, you, you can't get the curves. Happening. Right. Well, that's why I didn't use that or, or a cotton swab for this. Yeah, the cotton is right. The fantastics, but I did kind of go around my petals with a brush first. Yeah. So if I wanted to be extra, which I'm not going to be for the sake of this, because I don't want to, you know, otherwise we might be here all night because I can spend hours on stuff. Um, I would go in between these petals and paint another petal for layering. And so what I would do is come in and lift out another layer. And, and so I'm not going to do that here, but if you, while you're painting and you wanted to do that, you can. So I'm just going to leave it like this. There is some layering that's going on between some of these petals. So we'll, you'll, we'll see that whenever uh, we get to the next part. But for the next part, I'm actually going to pull my palette over here and I'm going to put some dandelion. You can use um, sunshine yellow. Use whatever yellow you have. Like I said, I didn't, I wasn't specific about colors because I didn't know what most people have in their stash. So um, I kept it open, but if you have a yellow, I'm just going to put some of this yellow into my palette, a decent amount, because I am going to paint these petals with the yellow and I want to let some of that alcohol evaporate out. So this is how we control the ink. If I were to dip my brush here into this yellow and then come over here, it, was, it, it would run and it would start to bloom. And it would bloom right into my green and mess up all this hard work I just did lifting out <laughs> petals. So we don't want that to happen. So we're not gonna do that. Um, so I'm gonna let this sit here for a minute and let it evaporate out a little bit. What happens with alcohol ink once it, it evaporates, some of the alcohol in it evaporates out, it becomes more paint-like, so it's very thick, thick. And there is a time frame that you can use it before it actually becomes gummy. And if it becomes gummy or dries out, you have to add a little bit more blending solution or alcohol to re-wet it and reconstitute it. Um, but the sweet spot is just before that happens. And when, and you have a few minutes to work with it. So that's why I only put a little bit in the palette Then I work with it and I'll do, I'll put a little bit more in the palette, depending on what it is I'm painting, um, just to make sure that I have enough to work with and that I have it in the right consistency. What starts to happen, you can't really tell on here because it's like the, the aluminum foil on here is, makes it a little bit um, hard to see, but it kind of beads up around the edges. And that part around there is, is the part that you can use that's more like a paint part while, we're, while you're impatiently waiting for the rest of it to set up. So I've done that. And I give it a little test here on my paper towel and it, it seems to be right. I can't sit and tell you the exact right consistency to start using it. Um, it's something that you're gonna, you kind of have to play around with. And I, I can't tell you, you need to wait X amount of seconds because there's so many factors that go into how quickly it evaporates, like humidity and all sorts of things. So I'm still pretty fluid here. So I'm not gonna put too much. I'm just gonna kind of go around the bottom here because I know I'm gonna be painting over that and just kind of fill that in while it's, so it's still too wet to be using here. So you gotta be patient. Anyway, I'm going to start painting this in here a little bit. I just wanted to um, mention a little something. Um, I'm doing the in-between petals. And um, because my background is purples, I'm dragging a little bit of that purple through my um, second row of petals and it's getting like a little bit of brownish, which is kind of interesting. Well, yeah, I, because what colors are you using? You're using the, I'm going to spotlight you again so I can see what you're talking about. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, because the, yeah, the purple and the, orange didn't kind of make a brown. So yeah, that makes sense. The purple and the yellow, I mean, make brown. Cool. So Laurie, another thing that I do sometimes if I'm getting impatient with the, um, with the dandelion getting 
thick enough is I put it actually out on the palette and spread it out. Yeah, I, yeah. You know what? You see this over here. This is where I had I have done that too. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing. I put it on the palette and I spread it all out, and then it gets nice and thick, and then I don't have to wait forever because yeah, that's a great tip. Thank you, Beth. Thank patience you. is something that I, I, I have know, about. Right? Patience is hard. But I will tell you that I think that that's why I like alcohol ink so much in painting is that I don't have to wait too long for it to be right. dry. And, you know, I might never get finished something if I didn't, if I wasn't working with alcohol ink. That's the, that's the thing. Like I have a project I've been working on for a couple, it's not even a project that would take a whole long time, but it's, but I'm working on it. It's been three weeks now. I mean, it is mixed media, so I do have to wait for drying times for my mediums and stuff. But, but you know, I have to walk away and go work on something else for a while and come back to it. And that's just not my nature. I think that's why I gave up oil painting, because I just did not have the time, patience to dry in between everything. <laughs> I was like... But see, that's what, that's the beauty is I have alcohol leak. I can come just do this while I'm waiting yeah. for that. So all I'm doing here, oops, that's too dark. Where did I pick that up at? Let me lift that. So when you make a mistake, you can always lift it out. Look at that. I, I don't know it. I picked up some brown somehow. And I don't know how that happened, but um, it did. And now all of my yellow is dried up now. It over dried. I got it overweighted. So, and I'm just brushing this in and I'm actually putting some uh, brush strokes in there in the direction that you would think the petal would go. Right. Because the inks leave this natural kind of line in the painting, which is kind of cool. It's kind of like it does part of the work for you. So also we had Corrine did a um a presentation a while back in the society um on these really beautiful whimsy sunflowers. Do you guys remember that? Yes. They, they were very funky. They're they're, they're funky. funky sunflowers. I absolutely love them and that approach. But anyway, I just wanted to mention it because it's she has them on sale right now on Create Smart Academy, the course. If you were interested in going and check it out. If you're a society member, um, it's already in the society. So go to the group and search for sunflowers and it, you, it should come back or go to media and click on video and you and search for sunflowers, you'll see it. Um, it's also on the website as well. But that's a fun one, just in case you're looking for something a little different. It's, it's like funky sunflowers with a beautiful pink background. I loved it. How's everyone doing? Any questions? Uh, <laughs> see some comments. Yep, that's, that's good. Well, I'm going to try to do something in between and make some greens in between, but I don't know whether that's going to work or not. So that's what I'm doing next. I have too much space in between my flowers. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I made all my overlap. Right. Yeah. Well, I wasn't paying attention to that. But I'm. But, you, but if that's an easy fix, though. So you just go in and you clean out and overlap again. Yeah. yeah. I think you and you just paint, the, paint some inner, in between. Well, I was trying to do something different and see about putting little leaves, but I think I'm giving up on that idea and I'm going to do something different still. <laughs> <I'm going to laughs> give... That idea didn't really work for me. This is why I love alcohol ink, because when I try something and I totally blow it, it's like, okay. 
when I'm teaching in class, I kept on saying, oh, look, an opportunity to change my mind. <laughs> an opportunity. I love that. That's yeah. what I say, too. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. We just, just changed our mind. Right. I know I said I was going to do it this way, but we're going to do it this well, way. Are you just using one um, color ink there? So, yes, I am. Um, you're getting some nice shading out of it. I am. And it's interesting. I think what's happening is in my palette, I had a little brown next to it. And just, it's picking up that teak wood, just a tad that I have in my palette. So it's kind of might be a little deceiving there. I was actually trying to go in and kind of get rid of some of that, but I kind of like it. It kind of is accidental, but. What do you want? Okay. I more yellow. I've got orange in mine too. It's pretty. That's good. Yeah. So that a lot, a lot of times you'll see that color. And then some people even come back in and put some white highlights, which I've seen that done too, which is kind of neat. I'm not going to do that tonight for this, these, but. Yeah, I'm just going to keep on working on it. <laughs> and you can just, and I honestly, I can work on these petals for a while, but I'm actually going to move on to the next part, and that's the center. Oh, no, you're done with your petals already? Hey, you <laughs> muted me. <laughs> I'm like, no wonder they're not replying to me. <laughs> I didn't mute you. Muted yourself. <laughs> Oops. Um. Lori, highlight me for a second. I want to show people what I'm doing. All right, hold on. A little bit of green in there I didn't want. Okay. Oh, wait. I, I was like, I was watching the other one on YouTube. So what I did was I, um, I painted in petals in between the ones that I wiped out. So I would drag that purple through the petals. And then I went back with... Um, a little bit of ember, but I added a little teak wood to the ember to like tone it down a tiny bit. And I just like dragged the brush through it in spots to get like some coloration in the leaves. And now I'm going back to the foreground petals and I'm starting at the, the tip and then I'm dragging it through. And you could see I'm sort of picking up those underlying colors. So now the leaf that I just painted is in the front and the ones that were previously painted with the little bits of orange and um, brown are in the background. So it's giving me a little bit of dimension by doing that. And I'm trying to do every maybe third petal so that way it has time to dry. And when I do the next one over, it doesn't start dragging um, the colors in and, you know, getting mushed together. So now I'm skipping one and I'm going to this one over here. Just wanted to um, share what I'm doing in case anybody wants to try this. Cool. Very cool. Voila. <laughs> Voila. So what I'm going to do before I start the center real quick, I decided that I'm going to come in and oh, highlight, wow. add some highlights towards the tip. Putting it out in there. Yeah. Wow. So I'm doing that by lifting a little bit. So I have a damp brush and I'm coming in at the tips of these and just kind of lift. Can you see what I'm doing there? Lifting out a little bit. Not oh, yeah, I like that. Just subtly. Yeah. It's even a little bit more dimension. They have so many different colors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're just lifting out the very edges. I like that. Yeah. Where is that? Somebody asked, where do you purchase the micro brushes? Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're like, they're sometimes sold as um, eyelash applicators or eyelash glue applicators. Are you talking yeah, about if you, if, you search, if you search micro makeup dental, it'll come up either as makeup or dental. Dental, and, yeah. Yeah, I've searched can, dental before. Yeah, and you usually can get about 400 or so for about 10 bucks. Yeah, they're pretty expensive. Yeah, the pack I got had. 
I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, the pack I got had like three or four, maybe five different sizes. Yeah, they do come in different sizes. There, there's not a huge difference though. I mean, you can pretty much use them interchangeably. It's just, you know, they're it's just a tiny bit of difference. But for what we do, I mean, they're all they all work pretty much the same. The other thing, if you're frustrated and stuff is not working for you, you can always use a um, alcohol ink marker or a Sharpie. <clears throat> yep, exactly. Because that, I was just looking for my alcohol ink marker because that'll clean out, carefully clean out some of those places that you go, oh, I didn't want that to happen there. And I can't, and I, and I carefully put my markers out and now I can't find them. Corrine, can I highlight yours just for a second? I like what you got going on where you're adding that. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, I like that how you're doing the shadows and, and adding those, that red in there for a little bit of extra accent. I like that. Yeah, it's a little bit of, um, it's showing up red on the screen, but it's Valencia. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So it's and I'm And I'm going, I'm just trying, yeah, it's hard to see the light. Then I'm just going in with a brush that appears dry, but the bristles are just damp and just kind of moving some of that ink back. Yeah, it's a good way to blend, I think. That's great. The good old, it's the Sharon Harris method uh -huh. lifted me of blending and highlighting. <laughs> so speaking of Sharon, I and, and speaking of brushes, I um I bought some of the Simply Simon brushes and I've kind of been babying them. So I haven't really been using them, but they have a nice little filbert in it that is just wonderful. Um so what, one of the things that I mentioned, it, I did accidentally pick up a little bit of teak wood that I had in my palette and it ended up working. So you might want to add in a little bit of another color, kind of like what Corrine is, is doing there. And I'm actually going to take a little bit of that and um, add in here a little bit to do some more shadowing too. Yeah, I ended up picking up some of the orange from the last um, painting and it ended up in mine, so. Yeah, so I mean, we work with it, right? So like these things yeah. happen. And I'm so using everything in my palette. Yeah, <laughs> just that's throwing it in there. <laughs> that's great. Okay, all right. I really am going to start the center now. Promises, promises. <laughs> all right. So for the center, I um have teak wood. And all I'm, and what I'm going to do, let me put that in my palette so that I can um, let that dry out a bit because I could just drop it right there, but I don't really feel comfortable doing that because it, I could risk it and I'm on camera right now. If it were just me, then I'd probably go for it. But, but um, I want to put some in the palette and have it dry out a little bit so that it's more paint like consistency because I want to add it into that center and I want to, um, sort of a darker darker um, look in the center. And then we're gonna do a little lifting for texture. And we'll, we'll probably add in a little bit of that, add in a little bit of that dandelion or sunshine yellow, whichever you're using, and maybe a, a tad of ember or a, a red in there as well, just to give it some dimension in the center. Cause you want the center to appear like it's kind of doming out a little bit. Okay, so this is taking a minute to just kind of dry out. So I'm just going to apply this a little bit in over this blue that's in here. And I'm just kind of tapping it in around in the circle because that's going to give it some texture, but it's also going to, we we'll have to do a couple layers to cover up that blue because it starts to get like a little bit of a green look to it, which is fine. Um, I, I, I've tried this two ways where I've lifted out the center with the blue and went straight in with the brown and then did it without it. And it just really wasn't that much different. So I said, why not? Why, why would I spend the time on the demonstration lifting whenever, if you, you can make that decision on your own, if you decide you want to lift. So I'm just tapping in this 
teak wood in here, just roughly. Um, around the edges, I like to tap with the brush turned sideways. I'm using a filbert brush. If you're using a round tip brush, this actually works great. Let me pull out a round tip one right now. I need a smaller round one. Let me see if I have one readily available. Yeah. Here we go. So I do have one, a tiny one here. And so I can come around the edges and just kind of tap out the edges so that it kind of blends into that. So because if you look at a photograph of a sunflower, you will see the edges. They don't, it doesn't, it's just not like a sudden cutoff. It kind of blends into the petals a little bit and has a little texture there at the end sticking out. So if I take my brush and just go around the edge and kind of tap that kind of sideways, it kind of gives you that look. Does that make sense, what I just said? Yep. Okay. I like purple. So I'm going to go back to my filbert brush a little bit here and yeah, I'm going to put a little more teak wood down and get a really nice green look because of the blue. So I want to kind of darken that up a little bit. I'm just tapping in so that I get texture. That's what I find that I get the best texture with just tapping. And you can see kind of what's happening there. That's, that's by design. A lot of things I do with alcohol ink are accidental, but this isn't. <laughs> and one of the other things is I go around in circular motion too, because you know we want to keep that center in there. And I'm kind of leaving kind of right now a, a kind of area that's lighter, although I can come back and lift if I need to. But I'm going to come in and do like a, a sort of a C shape in here. Leaving some of this outer edge. Too much of the center. I'll end up come back and lifting a little bit in here. No, much I'm not going to go all the way around, just kind of a C shape right in here. You see how I did that? Oh, I see your C. Yeah, yeah it, it kind of gives you a little bit of dimension. And then, I, then what I do is when I've got this when I'm happy with it, which I'm kind of almost happy with it, I think. Um, I come in with my black Sharpie and then give it more dimension in here by just tapping in the Sharpie. I'm on the fat end of the Sharpie. Tap it in to give it more, you can sort of get start to see depth here a little bit. And come around the outside of that sort of C shape. You can come back in with that brush a little bit more and you can play around with it to your to your happy kind of with the way that looks. So it's like adding, lifting, adding, lifting, going back and forth. It's a dance. And the more you tap, the more texture you get. You tap with a damp brush, not a wet one, in case you didn't get that. Okay. Sort of okay with that. How's everybody doing? Fabulous. Fabulous. Having fun. Having fun. I have a hair in mine. <laughs> I think they're all looking great. I'm going to quickly spotlight each one, one of you if it's okay. Look at Kimberly's real quick. Let me see Kim. Oh, I love it. Great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I don't usually paint with brushes. <laughs> this is different. Well, it looks great. And you'll, you'll play with that center and do your magic there because that's what you do on the others. I'm going to try. Yeah, it looks great. Thank you. And Terry. I'm so glad uh, I tried with brushes. I tried there. Huh? 
I'm just playing with mine. Mine's really dark. But that's oh, okay. I like your little C highlight there. That's good. Yeah, I'm liking that. Yeah, I did you? Who's with you? That looks great too. Um, that is um Judy's here again. Hi, Judy. <laughs> Hi there. How are you? Good. Good to see you or hear you. <laughs> yeah, I love Judy's. Hers oh. is very spirited. <laughs> I love it too. It's got it, yeah. It's gonna say it's got energy. It has lots of energy. Yes, thank it you, does. Thank you. I really like. You guys it. are kind. Thank you. Okay, let's look at Corrine's. Ooh, I like it. I like the I like how I like the curvature of your petals and stuff. I think that's neat. That's pretty. Very fun. nice. Thanks. Like, yeah, I'm just having some fun here. Yeah. It was, hard to, I, it was hard to see the middle because of the light. If I get it over. Yeah, I know there's certain lights. I had, huh? real, I had to turn my overhead lights on and adjust my little light. There, you know, my little lights that I have, they're all turned weird, wacky positions to try to get rid of glare. Yeah, but that's where we are. That looks good. Fun, fun, fun. Vera, we're coming over to yours. Okay. <laughs> you are on the spotlight. Oh, hi. <laughs> it's, it's looking fantastic. Nice. That's beautiful. Love it. Looking fantastic. I love your little thin petals. Gorgeous. I have something here called a deer foot brush. This is a quarter inch and I'm oh. putting it in alcohol and I'm blotting on my paper towel and I'm just tapping it. So that way I get like little speckles all in the center, but I'm not like, I'm keeping it kind of in from the edge, but away from the center. You know how that has like that little ring around the middle of a sunflower yeah I've been mm -hmm. flowers <laughs> and i'm just i'm just tapping around that middle to lift out a little bit of that dark brown right so you're highlighting it that's like what we're doing with the sea over here yeah same sort of thing yeah but i like that brush because you're going straight down on it right it's the best brush it, Amazon. It, actually that's that's pretty cool the effect you're getting with it i'm liking that can you hold yeah. it up closer to the camera? Sure. Let's see. I got to stand. So I got to find my yeah. perfect brush. I do okay. like that. I like that a lot, actually. Thank you. And this is the um, the brush I've been using. This is the deer foot brush. You can see it's it's round if you look at it straight yeah. on. But it it's like a brush that you overused. Yeah, it almost does look like an overused brush, but it's actually cut at an angle like that. And I have, um, I have the bigger one too. This is um, the, what size is this? This is three eighths of an inch with right. deer foot. Great brush. I highly mm -hmm. recommend it. We <laughs> always learn from each other. I love that. Well, I My favorite. That I killed. So. All right. So back to this one. I'm just going to leave it alone here so that we can go to the stems and the flowers. And then for the, for the stem, I'm just going to, because this is a forward fa facing um, sunflower, I'm just going to do a stem that comes kind of, it's going to be a little bit curved, but mostly straight down. So I'm going to start like right in this area here and just kind of come down like this. And I have a damp brush and you can just see I just dragged it down in the direction. And I'm going to go over it a couple of times to keep lifting and make it a little fatter at the top. And I don't have to lift all the way to white because it's gonna be green. And then with sunflowers, even though I hadn't been doing this way, I noticed they have a little stem that comes out and then the leaf comes off of it. The stem, yes. And um, so you just do a little leaf like this, kind of just go around and I'm going to lift it out just so you can see what I'm doing. You could just paint over the blue, honestly, with the green. Um, that reminds me, I need to put a little bit of green in my palette. So I'm using mojito. You can use a botanical, a meadow, lettuce, whatever green you like. I like these because this is such a vibrant um, set of colors I'm working with. And the mojito just kind of keeps with that vibe. 
trying to shed some light on some some uh, not so fun times. So the other, what I just did is I didn't even pull it out. I just put the yellow over the blue and it became green. Oh, that's good. I have purple. I can't do that. <laughs> you, can you can't do that, but I did. Use the color theory to your advantage. Yeah. Very yes, it was, it was, I, I was having a pain. It was so thick it wasn't coming out. And I went, well. Silly, I'll just put the yellow right on top of it and see what happens. And it turned nice and green. And I decided to do a little leaf here with a fold on it. So whenever I get ready. Oh. So yeah, I got fancy. Yeah, I gotta hmm. get something out over here on mine. So I'm gonna get a bigger leaf. And I like the I like the leaves to be a little funky. So that's what I'm doing. Well, my background's pretty funky, but that's okay. Oh, mine's very funky. I like it. <laughs> Funky's good. And and you know, a lot of times, I mean, for these demos, you know, we take an hour or we take an hour and a half, but a lot of times I'll end up spending a lot longer on a project, honestly. Yeah. Just, yeah. just because I, I'm a detail person. So I, I'm trying to let go of the overly detailed. So I'm trying to loosen up. I'm, you know, I'm really trying hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a process for me. The looseness and the magic of the, the alcohol inks is what made me fall in love with them in the first place. It's like, well, why am I fighting them so hard? Why don't I just like, you know, like Terry said, just let it do their thing. Like, yeah. Terry, Terry is great at that. I, <laughs> I, 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 I've always, that's been my whole number one thing. And I've been painting with alcohol inks for a long time is, is trying to go like and not get detailed. It doesn't work very good for me. But some of my best, or I should say best, I should say most favorite re results I've received is whenever I didn't have care as much and I did just let it go and relax. So, and didn't ever complicate things. Well, there's a really interesting, for those that are, be that are starting out as beginners, what happens is we want to get everything right and then after you've been doing it for years and years and years, sometimes it's like the letting go, you know, it's all about the letting go. You don't have to get as, as um, detail oriented because you, you know you can do it. So then you're free to not do whatever you want. Right. Good point. Right. You know, when I, when I first started doing, when I first started doing alcohol inks, I had to get them really precise because nobody else was doing them really precise. And then I finally ran into Karen Walker, who was doing them really precise. And I'm like, oh, somebody's doing it like I'm trying to do it. And then now I'm not that way all the time <laughs> at all. <laughs> and you know what? It looks great. So there. are. Terry, I think I had that syndrome where I had to get it precise because I think I think what I was trying to do was paint with them like watercolors or yeah. you know or um, medium, and you know, I was like kind of forcing things. And I'll still do my pet portraits like that, but I'm trying to loosen up so that you know the alcohol inks have their little magical ways about them, and I'm just kind of trying to let them do their thing for change. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that that's letting, I mean, the inks have a personality of their own, you know, of their own. And what I find is, you know, I've done a lot of art fairs and done a lot of sales over the years. And what always amazes me is the one I take, you know, 15 hours to do a painting. 
and like nobody really wants the prints. And um, then yeah. it, like 15 minutes and I do a really loose one. This was one of my first loose paintings. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, I'll spotlight it. Hold on. Can you spotlight it? Yep. So there uh, it is. And it was just wish wash, wish wash, you know, really loose. And this is one of my best selling prints that I've ever made. It's gorgeous. So, for a reason yeah because but you know so i so over the years i realized that being precise isn't always what you know works best for me i love the color combination of the blue and the yellow laurie and it just is just brilliant i love it and that's kind of what i was going for with this was was the contrast to be honest yeah, yeah. Yeah, mine's very contrasty. <laughs> I have really dark blue in there. Okay, I'm channeling um, Teresa, Teresa Brown, one of our contributors, because she likes to do sprinkles. <laughs> oh, I'm, yeah, I love sprinkles. Yeah, we're, we're going to, I'm totally doing sprinkles too in, in here. Yeah, that's the last, the last thing is going to be Inky now, sprinkles. Yeah, I love my sprinkles. I've actually already got a few sprinkles by accident, um, and that's okay. Letting their thing. I know it's like I had some, you know, sprinkle accidents that I was like, oh, I'm gonna do some sprinkles. <laughs> yeah. It worked. It certainly does. I think I'm done. Maybe. Good. I think yeah, I'm going to combine them too, except for the sprinkles. I could play with this a lot more. Yeah. Well, there is that too. <laughs> How many uh, hours can I? I'm looking for my little mister. My little mini mister. See, I don't use that because. It puts too much alcohol in there. <laughs> so what do you use? So I'm going to use, a, I think I'm going to use one of my brushes. Brush. I yeah, use a brush. I, I use a cheap brush. Um, oh, well, that works too. I just use a regular brush with a little bit of alcohol and just tap it just a little yeah, bit. I, tap it. Okay. I was watching you last night do a, uh, well, I was watching one of your YouTubes last night and yeah. I saw you doing that with the brush. I do that too sometimes. The thing you have to do is wait because what happens is if you overdo it, I you know. know, you have to do it and then you, you tap and then you wait and see what happens. And it's because the other thing for people that are students that don't quite understand how to do it, if you put a, take a pen or something and hit the brush on the ferrule, Yes. It will do really nice little dots. That's what I did. Yeah, that's that's a easy way of doing it too. But I love my sprinklies. It is important too if you're gonna anybody uses the toothbrush. So I dip it in, I don't care, my alcohol is dirty, and I but I tap it off on my paper towel or puppy pad or whatever. Yeah. So you Get most of of it out and then sprinkle excellent yeah. yeah and i like that and wait for it yeah yeah looking I've had students in my classes totally ruin a painting by not waiting for it right Patience is definitely a. <laughs> Patience is a virtue I usually don't have. But <laughs> yeah. Guys, this was so much fun. YouTube are, are enjoying it also. Yeah. I'm so glad so many people were able to join us because I know it was short notice, but you know, this was, this is kind of a timely thing. Um, mm -hmm. And wanted to, wanted to make sure that, you know, we, 
let people know that we're thinking about them and that, you know, we're pulling for, for the people of Ukraine. And, you know, they're not the only, you know, victims in all this either. So all the people that are affected by um, what's going on right now, it's just heartbreaking, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see everybody's. Okay. Well, here's mine. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm going to see Kimberly's. Easy enough. <laughs> here's Kimberly's. Oh, very Ooh, nice. Pretty. Nice work. Thank you. I don't know that it's done, but the start. Looks great. Thank you. And then here's Terry. Background looks awesome. Wow. I love it. I love the contrast of that yellow on the blue. And then I love the yellow on the blue. Yeah. And the greenery coming out around the edges of it. That's nice touch too. Move yeah, it close to the camera. I can't see. There we go. Oh wow. That looks so good. Oh, your your paddle is amazing. Yeah. Looking great. Thank you. All right, Corrine. Yeah. So I oh, I love it. yours. Yes. Yeah, it looks awesome. I love Thank your you. pedals. Look like they're dancing. They're pinwheeling or something. They, yeah. yeah. They're dancing. And then I posted a more serious one that I painted yesterday. So today's is dancing. Yeah. And then Vera's. Oh, I'm nice, Vera. Like Look at all the depth you got. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. I, very glary. Sorry about that. Yeah, you look <laughs> fabulous. All right. Awesome. And then I'm going to switch <laughs> to me here. Go back to gallery view so we can see us all. And just going to switch back over here. Just so I can say hi, so you guys can see who's been stand, sitting here talking and painting. Um, thanks for tuning in tonight. Look, if you painted this or you're going to paint it, do us a favor and share it in social media. Just use um, hashtag AIArtCom with two M's at the end so that we can locate it and um, share it um, as well. So I do a lot of reposting on Instagram. So if you share it on Instagram, I'll repost it over there for you or share it to our story so that all of our followers can um, see it. Um, we, if you do reels, um, I do repost regularly on reels. So it's a great way to get featured over there. Plus um, we love seeing what you do. Um, and then on the Facebook group, the Alcohol Ink Art Community, do the same thing. Use the AI Art Com that allows us to search that term and see people who work on projects that we do for these live presentations. So um, thank you, ladies. Thank you to our contributors. We have a wonderful group of, of teachers and, and contributors. They, everyone just dropped everything this week to just jump on this evening and, and <laughs> give up their time share their techniques and expertise so i really appreciate it um all of you for for being willing and taking the time to to jump on and do this thank you to darlene hinman again darlene was the one who reached out to me monday morning and said hey Lori, why don't we do a paint along and i said you know what why didn't why didn't we think of that that's a great idea because you know we can't i feel helpless and it's like some small thing that we can do um, so fill the internet with your sunflowers Thanks everyone for joining in. Bye ladies. Bye. 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 Bye.